Today I'm doing a follow-up video for the previous plasma cutting one we did a couple of weeks ago. Now when I did that video quite a few people asked me how well it cut using the external air connected but I never tried so I was interested to know basically how it worked off the shelf using the internal compressor and saying that's what we did and that's what I showed you. So I was relatively happy with it up to 3-5mm but after that it struggled a little bit and I'm hoping the external compressor connected might resolve that issue. So for today we're going to connect the external line and we're going to basically compare the original cuts which I've still got with a new cut on the same piece of metal and I'll show you side by side how it does compare. Um, I was kind of surprised when I went online and I found that the internal compressor on this machine puts out between 4 and 4.5 four and bar which is 58 to 65 psi. Certainly when you're using it you don't tend to notice it out of the gun, it's quite noisy anyway but certainly you don't hear the wind rushing from uh, from your hand sort of thing. So <laughs> um, I was a bit surprised at that. So for today we're collecting the external air and I've put 90 psi through it. Now I'm not saying that is the correct thing to do. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be lots of debate and comments about the correct setting of air for any given amperage or thickness of metal. And if anyone's got a sweet spot for this particular machine, let me know. I'd love to know it. I really would and everyone else will share it with everybody. I was happy with the 0.8 and the 1mm and the 2mm stainless I could have probably done with turning the heat up a bit but that was okay too. So we're going to jump straight to 3. Now this is the piece we cut last time. It's a relatively good cut and there was a bit of dross on the back. You can see there it'll knock off but I haven't knocked it off yet. So we're going to do a comparison to that. Let's see if we have any better luck with 80 psi. Hmm, that's a no then. Let's try 70 psi. Houston, we have a problem. So, it didn't work at 90, 80 or 70 psi. So I'm not sure really what you're supposed to do. I'm supposed to turn the pressure right down? I guess that's all you can do. But then that's defeated the whole object. No, confusing times. I'm going to double check, make sure the compressor's not putting way too much pressure out. <laughs> so I've kept it at 70 psi and I've turned the volume right down. You can, you can hear it coming out of the gun. It's probably a little bit more than it was from the internal compressor and it works. Uh-oh, <laughs> I think we've tripped everything out now. Go. Oh. Round two. Oh, reset my clock. So, before we pop the fuse, this is how far we got. I've got to be honest, if you look underneath, it doesn't look much different to the, the previous cut. So we've still got the same amount of dross on the bottom of it, look. It's not fired it off, it's not fired it away. Both cuts look relatively clean anyway. So given the slight increase in pressure and who knows what flow, that didn't seem to make any difference at all. Let's keep playing. Nope, this time we're going to try 40 psi. Nope! <laughs> this time 30 psi! Ugh. 20 psi! I know, I've got something novel we're going to try. Internal compressor. I don't know. I'm at a loss. I really don't know what's going on. So I got down to 20 psi. I guess I could go lower, but it should be working at 20. I mean, clearly, it works when you use the internal compressor still. 
I'm not giving up on this and I want to make sure that the issue isn't when putting too much air through the plasma cutter or more air through the plasma cutter than we think we are. Now I can't see I me mean, having three faulty regulators in one weekend, that'd be just crazy. So there's a regulator that's on the compressor, there's the one on the wall which has gone faulty while we were filming, so it's sprung a leak and I can't stop it from leaking. I've cleaned all the seals, I've rebuilt it, it's still belching air out, so we're getting rid of that one because I don't trust it anymore. And I bought a third one. But surely if I put a third regulator in line uh, and we still have the same issues, it can't be about air control. You know how bad days come in threes, right? Well, that there, a little blob, is it? And that one there, in the middle of my forehead, I think there's a couple more, aren't in fact cosmic rainbow bubbles of happiness and joy. They're annoying little bits of metal stuck in my lens. Do you know what that means? Beer o'clock. Right, we're all installed. I'm even going to use a long length of low diameter piping. So fingers crossed. Turn the air on, dickhead. Oh my word. It works. So, it cut at 50 psi, no problem. Two faulty pressure regulators? What's that all about? 80 psi. Totally caught me off guard how, uh, how quick that would be. I cocked it up at the start. I'm not cut through at the start, look. <laughs> so the cut, it's not actually as neat as the original. So that's the original side we did. And probably because I just went, oh my god, what am I doing? <laughs> it's a bit messy. But say it cut so fast, I didn't expect it to. So I reckon, given that one attempt, the, uh, the original cut's probably better at a slower speed with a more controlled action. Uh, underneath, it doesn't seem much better to be quite honest with you. It's not blowing it away, so uh, I reckon internal compressor for the win on three for this. Bad days sometimes come in fours. It smells like a dog's shat on top of my beer. <laughs> I don't even own a dog. <laughs> 80 psi, 5 mil steel. I just was not prepared for how vicious that was going to be. And obviously using a chunk of wood to try and stop you from burning your garage down and stopping the, the, the sparks from going that way wasn't a good idea either. So plasma cutters are quite good at cutting wood, it seems. And very, very quick at cutting 5 mil. So as a comparison, this is the original one, the internal compressor, you can see where it's starting to struggle and it went a bit slopey and sideways, and almost cutting at 45 degrees actually. Whereas this one, the new one, it's pretty much square, so it's cutting through. I mean it felt like it was it was monstering its way through the metal in comparison to, to how it was before. Um, I say it kind of caught me off guard again as to how quick I needed to cut. Um, so yeah, quite impressive I guess. I'm trying not to set my garage on fire with the uh, the new extra ferocious plasma cutter I seem to have uh, got. <laughs> so um, I basically have coated a water bath. It's an old 
tray I used for catching oil in the cars and stuff, and a bit of old uh, grill from an old oven. So, a bit of luck. We'll not be on fire by the end of this video. So next we're going to go for 6mm again with the 80 PSI. So how did it do? So this is the new one. This is the latest cut with the external air. You can see it's quite uniform. But the original one is a lot more choppy and, uh, and bitty if that makes sense and it's at more of an angle so it, with the external layer it cut a, a square cut although not a perfectly square one and uh, gave a nicer finish as well, a better finish 8mm steel next There go the fuses. Okay, let's see if we can finish this. Now this is interesting, so today's cut is this one, and that looks pretty messy, there's a lot of dross at the back, bottom of there, look, and it's a pretty nasty cut at a pretty nasty angle, and if we compare that to the internal compressor cut, look how much nicer that one is. So clearly the key isn't purely down to just P PSI, um, there's an element of skill possibly involved. I'm not sure. I'm not sure why one was so much better than the other one and what I did wrong. I'm sure somebody will tell me in the comments. But PSI did not give me a better cut on 8mm. It may have been quicker and easier, and more scary, <laughs> but not better. Okay, last cut for the day 10mm steel, again 80 PSI and 40 amps. Plug fuse then. So, how do we do with the 10mm? Now, forgive this part here, you can't count that because that was a cock up with the, the power cut out and I put the internal compressor on by mistake and uh, mashed it up trying a couple of times. So, the first part here is with the external air. It's not a very good cut, it's not brilliant. It is better than the internal compressor one from last week. So that's what we did with the internal compressor versus the external air. So on the 10mm it did seem to be a little bit better. Just the amount of dross on the back is pretty similar. Wow, it has been a long two days in the garage trying to sort this video out. Was it all worth it? No, not really. <laughs> I'm going to be honest, it wasn't. So the plasma cutter, as we know, it cuts pretty well on the, the thinner stuff, so the 0.8, the 1mm, the 2mm, 3mm, it's no issues at all. It's controlled, it's not crazy, but it's, it's, it's easy to use. It's fun to use. I actually had fun doing the first video. It was fun to see what we could do with it. When you connect the external air, it becomes, like I said, kind of ferocious. It's a lot. The, the, the sparks fly. It gets hot. Um, so obviously we, we broke out the, the water bath, which is probably a good thing to do um, if you were going to do it either way. But it was kind of necessary with the extra air because there's so much sparks coming out so fast. Um, I, I was scared of setting everything on fire. Um, you probably noticed part way through the video I swapped to a, a gauntlet because I actually managed to melt my glove while I was wearing it, <laughs> which wasn't good. So yeah, there's the, 
the extra heat which I, never, I hadn't really considered. And the other things I hadn't considered were the, the external issues. So obviously we had the problem with the uh, regulator. I mean, who has two faulty regulators in one day? That's just, that's just crazy. Um, but then the electricity issues. So obviously I've got a, a garage with a, a domestic setup. We're on a 15 amp fuse and when it was running by itself, the, with the internal compressor with no external uh, compressors running, there was no issues with fuses popping at all. I mean, I, I run the welder without any issues on the same circuit um, and I didn't expect an issue with it. But then when you get the, the, the external compressor running at the same time as the plasma cutter, big trouble. So I ended up popping the main fuse twice and then eventually I popped the fuse in the actual cutter itself, the 13 amp domestic plug fuse. So yeah, three fuses, load of air problems, needed water because the extra heat and flames everywhere. It's a lot of hassle. And then on top of that, you've got to lean around the back of the machine to turn the air on and off. So sometimes you start it without putting the air on because you forget. Or when you finish cutting, you forget to turn it off. So it keeps running. It's like, oh, it's just, it's a pain in the ass. Why, why would you want to do that? It's just not convenient to do at all. So it really would be a last ditch effort, I guess, to, if you were cutting something super thick and you need a lot of air pressure to get through it. But up to 10 mil, there's not a lot of a great difference. There's not, there's not enough difference, I don't think, for the amount of hassle it takes to hook it up to the air. So for me, my advice would be to, well, you, you bought a budget cutter with an internal compressor, is use it for how it was kind of designed. It's, if you're going to be cutting through girders and stuff, the chances are you want to spend more money on a more powerful cutter anyway. Um, if you've got this one, the chances are you just want to cut something that's you know, up to 5 mil, I guess. Um, and enjoy it for what it is. Have fun with it. Don't spend days in a freezing cold garage trying to make the external light work because it's not worth it. Cheers guys. Take care. Time for another beer. I'm not sure if product placement's allowed on uh, YouTube so I better not turn it around. <laughs>